Well, hello there. What is up, you guys? Welcome. Welcome back to my channel. Marky here. I missed you guys. I'm sorry about yesterday. Um, I had some technical difficulties, and that's all I gotta say about that. Anyways, we're here. We're back, and I'm ready to give you today's daily message. So if you're interested in hearing what I have to say, stick around. And let's go. Today is April 2nd. And the title of the message is called, What a Future. I like it. The scripture is Ephesians 2, 6 through 7. And it says, God hath raised up, had raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. Okay, let's do this. What a future. All my life, people told me the reason God saved us was so that when we got to glory, we could spend the rest of eternity loving him and worshiping him. But you know what? That's just not so. It sounds pretty good, but it's just something somebody made up. God isn't selfish. He does. He is just the opposite. He's the ultimate giver, the ultimate lover. He doesn't do anything just so he can get something in return. Like us. Why then did he save us? Why? The word of God tells us he did it so that in the ages to come, he could show us the exceeding riches of his grace. Think about it. God is going to spend eternity showing you riches of his grace to you and to me. That's why he sent Jesus into the world. He so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Thank you, Jesus. He sent Jesus so he could have more sons to love and to give to and he plans to spend the eons of time doing just that as a believer you have the most glorious future ahead of you that anyone could ever ask for but you do not have to wait until you get to glory to enjoy it you can start right now you will have already been seated amen amen God wants us to be his sons and daughters, and he wants to bless us. He wants to give us so much, so much. And our future is so bright in Christ. But think about this, y'all. Our future, right? What a future. The sad thing right now is that so many people don't know what to think about their future. So many people in the world, I should say. What future is there? You know, we can't even barely think about what's going to happen tomorrow right now with this pandemic. Um, let alone five years from now. I mean, kids aren't even able to go to school. What about the kids, the call, the kids who are, um, graduating high school and supposed to be going into college? There's no future right now. There is none. The only future that y'all have right now is a future in Christ. And I'm telling you that. I, I get mad at myself because I wasted so much time, so many years, so many precious moments that I could have been having this abundant, happy life. I wasted it trying to fit in with the world when I was never supposed to fit in the world. That's why when I was living in the world, my life sucked. <laughs> That's why I was depressed. That's why I was suicidal. That's why I was sad. That's why nothing went right for me. Because I was a child of God and I was called by God and I kept running away from him. He wasn't going to allow me to enjoy the world. Because I had a purpose. I, I had somebody who wanted me more than I wanted the world. I'm telling you there's nothing in the world that is more important or that can compare to the to the joy that Jesus can bring to your life. The Jesus wants to bless you. He wants to give you the best future you can ever even imagine. A lot of people are thinking, "No, oh, well, if God loved us so much, why is he doing this coronavirus? Why is he why is he doing all of this?" <laughs> Well, 
Why not? What else does he have to do? He's tired of begging you. He shouldn't have to beg us. He offers so much beauty. And yet, we don't want it. We want to fall for the deceivement of the devil and live in the world and of the world. Look at our world, you guys. Look at our president. Look at our government. Look at the people who are in charge. Do you really want to live of the world right now? All these plagues that are coming. <laughs> if you're under the blood and you have Jesus, <laughs> you are protected. Nothing can harm you. But you have to surrender all. You have to get outside of you. You have to be able to turn from your wicked ways. You have to let your flesh not overcome you. You have to overcome your flesh. We need to learn how to become dead to sin and alive to God because that's only where a future lies for us. I was at Bible study last night and y'all, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Can I have a moment just to talk to you guys for a second, friend to friend? Let me tell you about my church. Let me tell you about where I go to get my word. I go to my father-in-law's church. Yes, he's my family member, but that's not why I go. Not at all. I go because it's where the truth is is spoken whether you like it or whether you don't my father-in-law my pastor he will not change for you for me for anybody else there's no special treatment because I'm his family there's nothing he is the type of pastor that he is going to preach the Bible the truth Jesus's truth he's not gonna sugarcoat it my church is not one of those gummy bear churches you know, the ones where they just tell you Jesus wants to bless you and and want your money and ten dollars. Give us ten dollars and you'll get a blessing today. All those false prophecies and no. My church whoo my church is like getting a whooping, y'all. Like whoo sometimes I'm like, oh my god, I'm so exhausted. You know? But thank you, Jesus. Because that's what that statement, the truth hurts, means. The truth will slap you in your face. But I needed to be slapped. And probably some of y'all need to be slapped too. This Bible is all, is all that we need, you guys. It's all that we need. This was left for us, for our future, to have abundant life. But why do we shut this out? Why do we, why do we not give this a chance? What do you, what, I just like to be in the minds of some people and wonder, like, why do you think the way you think? And why, who do you think wrote this? What do you think it was for? Why, when you see what's going on in this world and the, the catastrophes, the natural disasters, the earthquakes, the fires, the government, the people in charge of us, like, it's all in the Bible. It's all in the Bible. And you know what? All the answers are in there too, but nobody will go looking. Nobody will seek him. Nobody will give him a chance. I can imagine how he feels because I, I you know, I, I dissed him for a long time. <laughs> and that's my biggest regret. I could have been living so good for the past six, seven years. But instead, I I lived for the enemy. I lived in the world. I lived of the world. I I didn't give God a chance. I didn't I didn't believe that God 
could do anything for me. I, I believed, I've always believed he could do it for somebody else. I have always believed it because I've witnessed it. I've seen it. I've, I've witnessed miracles. Like I'm talking like bringing people back to life miracles in my church, in our ministry. But I never believed that it was for me. Like I wasn't good enough. I didn't fit in. You know, I'm a white girl going to a predominantly black church. I feel awkward when I praise. I I don't feel comfortable. I don't know how to clap with everybody. Like, But those are just the lies that the devil puts inside of me to keep me in fear and to keep me away from it. Well, no longer is he going to keep me away from my blessings. That is my home. That is my place. I do belong and I do fit in. And so many other people do too. So I want to be that person that shows you. I can be this white girl going to this black church. But it's not about that. I go to church. I go to that church because it's the truth. Because he doesn't add to the Bible and he doesn't take away from the Bible. He won't change this word for you or for me. Like literally, like a lot of people won't go to church or they'll search and search for a church that fits them. That they can be them, they can be them since their sinful ways, and yet still claim that they follow Jesus. Like, you know, I can still drink, um, I can still drink my alcohol, and I can still go out clubbing, but I can go to church on Sunday. I've been there, I tried it. It doesn't work, y'all, it don't work. You can't add to it. You can't, you just can't, no way, no matter which way you try, you cannot. It doesn't work. You will hit that wall every single time and fall. You can't be saved with your thoughts, with your thoughts. You have to have God's thoughts. You have to have the thoughts that he left, the blueprint he left us. You have to follow this to the T. To the T! Like you, you all think that you could just say, I accept you, Lord. You died, you died on the cross for me and... I am saved by your grace, signed, sealed, delivered. I don't have to work any of my salvation out. I can do as I please. And then when it's time to go home, you will open those doors for me. Are you kidding me? People really think this way. And then they call us people who don't think that way. People that believe the Bible. They call us fear mongers and... Because we're just scaring people. No. The people need to be scared, first of all. I thank God somebody scared me. I thank God that I was led to where I am. Because I was lost. And I was deceived. You guys, this is no joke. You want to know something weird? This is not Marky. Like, this isn't the Marky I know. <laughs> And I'm sure some people who are watching me that know me personally are like, yeah, this is not Marky. This is not Marky. I am not comfortable doing this. I'm not comfortable talking about God. I'm not comfortable being this outspoken. But this is the Christ in me coming out. I've waited for so long, like, hoping and praying that I could, I could be like the people I saw. <laughs> and so I started seeking and I started knocking at his door and begging and pleading with God to hear me. And he heard me. And he started working. I thought my life was over. And I realized my life has just begun. I'm getting all off subject. But that's alright, right? Okay. I just wanted to share with you guys something from last night. At Bible study. Um... 
this has to do with the world and how the world is basically looking for a savior, right? You know, we all want somebody to fix this coronavirus. We all want to go back to our normal lives and routines and nobody seems to have the answer. Well, I know the answer, but nobody's going to listen to little old me. But I'm going to still say it. I'm going to still talk. <laughs> I just want to leave with you, leave a, a scripture with y'all. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return unto the Lord. And he will have mercy upon him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Second Chronicles 7.14 If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, and I will forgive their sin, and I will heal their land. That is what the Lord is telling us. If America will just let go and humble themselves, if America will just pray and seek his face, and if America will turn from their wicked ways, the government, the people everywhere will just stop and turn from their wicked ways. Then the Lord said, he said it. And when he said something, he means it. He never lies. He said that if we all just turn from our wicked ways, that he will hear us and he will heal our land. So, I'm going to leave you all on that one. Spread the word. The people got to hear it. <sighs> I'm just one person. But it starts with one, so. So, loves, listen to this. I picked these prayer cards up at the good old Dollar Tree yesterday. And, you know, I couldn't, couldn't help myself. They're so dang cute. And so I thought with every video we could pick one. It says today's prayer on them. It's probably going to show backwards because I'm using my phone. But, um, and we'll read one and it can, you know, give us a little encouragement each day. So, let's see. Not. Which one should we pick, y'all? Pick, 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 pick. Okay. Okay, this is a good one. This is so good. I love you, Jesus. All right. Today's message or today's card says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. Proverbs 3, 5. Amen, amen, amen. So that means don't lean or count on your own understanding. Don't even count on my understanding. Go seek for yourself. I believe the Lord said, um, no man knoweth the way, but through a man of God. So... Go get you a man of God. I recommend my pastor. He's the bomb. Dot com. All right. Bye. So, yeah. Thank you guys so much for listening to me. I hope that I made sense. I hope that y'all got something from this message. And I just encourage y'all to give it a chance. Give God a chance. Give the word a chance. Because I promise you, you won't regret it. The Lord wants to bless you. He wants to give you an abundant future. And, you know, weigh out your options right now. I mean, a worldly future compared to a spiritual future. <laughs> there is no, there's no question. But, um, yeah. I love you all so much. And um, give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Comment down below what you think. Share it with somebody you think needs to hear it. And, yeah. Until next time, stay blessed, guys. I love you so much. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Subscribe.